Are you able to hear me? Maybe I don't need this thing here. There we go. It's better with or without? There we go. With. Okay, with. Great. But anyway, we are the servants of Jesus Christ today and we are part of the hope. We are inside of this big family because missionaries obey the commands of God. Starting from the disciples there. And it, it is continuous like that. And I don't want to stop my mission. And I hope, I do hope that my two daughters are going to be missionaries. So then it's going to continue. I'm, going, I'm not going to make them for the business. I'm going to make them for the missions. But that's going to be their decision. And that's going to be God's calling them. But for sure, that's my thing for them. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't want them to be the most successful somebody in the world. I want them to be the most obedient Christians that they can be. And uh, we, we, we had, and you all know that you have, none of you here are just new in church. The faces that I'm seeing here is the ones that I'm seeing for a while. And you know what we have been doing. The privilege that we have to be in, in missions. And, and I'm going to be showing you some pictures. And, and it's very hard to summarize one year or two years in a place. And especially doing that in pictures. Uh, uh, and when, when you see that red there, it's not that call of red, it's a little bit more red because the screen is going to be different, you know, but it's just, just to try to bring our, our um, imagination here to what I'm trying to be speaking. And don't worry, I, you are not going to be listening only to my voice, Kimberly, after she is going to come up here and she has a sweeter voice than mine, I, I know that. <laughs> but anyway, this, this is our house, this was our house in, in Fiji, we were living in a city called Lautoka. Lautoka is the second biggest city in Fiji. And uh, we, we, we are blessed to be in that place. From the second floor there, the whole, it, it had like a L shape, our apartment. And we had um, one, two, three, four, five rooms there. And our room was the biggest one. And there's another one, actually, biggest one like good space and then there was another one that has like we could put eight, eight people ten people there inside uh we i think the maximum that we got there was 16 people inside our apartment for a whole month and wasn't like crowd was was fine to be so that place has been rented by marine Ridge for 16 years if i'm not wrong and unhappily we just lost that place uh, Marine Rich used to rent three houses in Fiji. We cannot afford to keep doing that because there is no mission, there is no ministry going now. So uh, they had to give up two of this business and our house went on that one because that was the most expensive one to maintain because we kept the top part there and also the left side here um, on this way here it was a big garage where we keep our equipment. So now everything from that house is empty and went all inside one of the house, the small one that is close to the leader's house. But anyway, that was the place that we stayed for, for two years. So maybe we can pass the next picture there. That's just, I think, a different angle of the same house. There you go. My car used to be there outside. That's a... Uh, uh, from our room, we, we could see the sea. So, and we just walk there every afternoon as a possible. And it was just great. It's in a great spot, very close to town. And was like, a, it's an industrial area right there. We didn't have neighbors. Our neighbors was only during the day. Nighttime was that peaceful, calm, great. So, uh, when, when you think about Fiji, in Brazil, everyone asks, where is that? In America, everyone say, wow, <laughs> now, because when we think about Fiji, that, that, that's what's come because of the blue water and the white sand beach. So I'm going to show just some of these pictures of the beauty of Fiji. Not that I can do that here because this was where we went. That is one island. 
in that island, you don't have village, you just have one resort. It's one of the most prestigious resort in the country there. And that island belonged to one family, to one single family. So the resort has to pay the lease to that family. And Fiji has 330 islands. Some of these islands is just that, just one resort. And then you have one whole area, it's just rocks besides the sea. And the other area is just this white beach. It's just amazing. So you can pass, uh, keep going on that one. That one was this, we stayed in this resort for two nights, I think. That was our goodbye of Fiji. It was my gift from my birthday and I waited until the last minute to use that one, was, was good. <laughs> you can go ahead, uh, yep, keep going. Uh, then you, I woke up in the morning, just you get this nice of rainbow over there. It's, it's beautiful, you can keep going. Yep, keep going. I can, if you want, like I can share with you after these pictures on, on all the way. If, if you want, you can just give me your email and I can give that to you just for you to have these pictures because on, on your computer is going to show better than this one. You can keep going there. There we go. And these pictures are just like, I, you can keep going there. It's just taken with my phone, no filter, no anything. It's just beautiful like that. That's just in our house close to our house, I used to get very amazing pictures of sunset. I have maybe 60 pictures of sunset in my phone and it's just one most beautiful than other. So when you think about island, of course, that's one of the ways of go to the sea to fish, for fishing there. And that is just the most common, is just some bamboos, you cut some bamboos tie those using some kind of not, uh, um, just one of the wine, I don't know how that, it's just all as rustic as it can be. But that's one of the way to go to the sea and get some fish there, just floating on the water. And they know how to do that. Uh, this is one of the fastest way to go from the main island where we used to live, where we are living, to the second main island. So those was the, the two main islands in the country. That one here, you see that there, there's this kind of a uh, big open here. You go with your car, bus, truck, everything goes under there. And then once you put your park, your car under, you go upstairs and it stays. There we go. There we go. Whoa, Mike. Tell you what. Man. Yeah, this white hair. I don't know if I will get that experience all, but anyway. But anyway, this one, we, uh, we traveled to the second, the North Island twice. And then you take uh, this boat, that's the fastest way to go. And that is uh, around three hours in the open sea to go there. And uh, the, there are other ways, ship as well, that takes like 12 hours. And then go from another part of the country. But that, we took that twice. And it's, uh, it's an interesting adventure. You can go. So island, food, fish. And you get, believe in me, in, in Fiji, you don't have problem with fish. Every meal that you have a big ceremony, a big meeting, fish is going to be there. And they won't cook just one fish for you. They are going to cook like 15 fish for you, for each person. So, because there, there's no, you don't pay for that. You just go to the, like for us, you just go to the wharf. Uh, 10 minutes walking from our house, two minutes driving from our house was the wharf. You go there, you get the guys just coming from the sea and then you get the fresh one. So these ones here, there's nothing fancy on this fish. It's just boiling water with lemongrass and ginger. And after put there, and then you have on the side, you have um, cassava, plenty cassava. Who knows which is cassava here? Okay, cassava, it's something very, very common for me because I grew up eating cassava. It's just a root. It's a kind of a root that uh, uh, the, 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 the tree of cassava grows big like that with some branches. And then you have on the bottom, you have, I would say eight cassavas that it's thick as my arm here. It's not that thick, but you know, just for you to have idea. And can be big like that here, even bigger. 
So once you, you get that from the, the ground there, you just peel, and it's very easy to peel, and then you put in the water boil that it's like potatoes, let's say like that. Would, I should start like that, but <laughs> anyway, it's like potatoes. Okay, it's a, it's a kind of a start. And from cassava, you can do a lot of things. So you get here some tapioca, tapioca flour, cassava flour, they say like that, it can be like a starch. The same way that you have the corn starch, you get the same thing from cassava. Starch, then you get a thick one, and for them is just get the cassava, boil it, and eat with fish. If you have cassava and fish, you can survive easily. So I remember that the first time that Kimberly and I went to the market, and you go to the market and have piles of cassava because that's what everyone eats. And then I asked, so I, I, I just want this small here. And she looked at me and said, do you know what is that? Do you eat it? I said, yes, I do. Huh, I thought it was only Fijians that eat cassava. <laughs> but no, in my country we do with cassava much more than you do here. Here you just eat cassava. In Brazil we do a lot of things. So fish, you are going to eat a lot of fish there. A and one thing that is interesting, who likes to eat fish here? Great. Who likes the head of the fish? Yeah. Never tried it. See? There you go. In Fiji, that is the food for the chief. He is the one that gets the head. Yeah, all the eyes are good. But when I'm talking about head, let me tell you something. I'm not talking about a head in the size of my hand. I'm talking in a head on the size of this Bible here. Because fish there, it, it's not what sardines. Sardines are, you know, th those little things. We are talking about big fish. And it's kind of got, do you remember how, how much was the, how many pounds was that fish, Kimberly? I think was in kilos was 18 kilos, 12, no, 12 kilos, I think. 35 pounds. And that is not the biggest one. It's just a regular. It, it, you are in a sea, you know? <laughs> you can go further here. And I, I'm using this one here. This is not a skirt. Believe on me. That's not skirt what I'm using here. That's called sulu. Okay? It's open here. And I have a shirt under here. Most of the men's over there, they won't have. Okay? It's just this thing here. And that one has pocket. That's only for men. Woman is going to use ones that's very colorful. Kimberly, she has one there, but she made that a skirt, but that can be made just a sulu as well. And that is just a, a, a um, formal way of uh, dressing in Fiji. You go to the banks, that's what the guys are using. You see the kids going to school, all of them using the skirt or the sulu. So that is just, and, and I, I don't think, I, if I go to church in my two years there using my shirts on the, the Fijian church using my, my pants for four or five times, that would be the most because after a while it's just Sulu. And that thing is just easy. You, you are, our men, we, we men, is just using shirt at home, the, the pants, just put that thing around and go like that, good to go. Don't need to do much. So that is just a normal, I think, I don't know if that day I was speaking in church, but that is just a normal way for us there to go to church. You can go to the next one. So I, on the left side, you are going to see Ben, <coughs> Ben Rokovu. He is our Ben and Kamba, he and his wife. They are the oldest uh, couple in our ministry. They are the local ones. And they are responsible when we are doing outreach to cook. She was the one that feeding us. And, and, and again, when you go to Fiji, feeding is taken serious because you eat a lot. And Ben, uh, he was the, our, our spokesman because our leaders there, Daisong and Rowena, they are from, he is from South Korea, she is from the Philippines. And when you go to the village, you speak with them in English. They are going to understand. But when you speak in the, 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 the other language, Fijian, you open more doors. Ben, our, he, he is our spokesman there. So we went to visit this man, 
that we met in one of the outreaches. So I put the picture of them there just to you to see this natural color of a Fijian there. And it's, we are going to have some other pictures from Fijians. Um, last year, last year we didn't have much uh, activity as a ministry, Marine Ridge Fiji, because what we were doing, we were not able to do last year. Because of that, we, Kimberly and I started to pray for God for opening doors for us. Because get my situation, I am a missionary. I came to this country not to live. I came to this country to work. And uh, I, am, I, am, I am being paid by my church to work. I'm not paying by my church to be at home and relax and say, everything is stopped, so I just take my, 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 my uh, rest here. Y you get this feeling of, Lord, I'm here to do something. I am here to do something. I want to do something. And then you start to, to get this thing of, uh, till the point that you understand that's not you doing. God is doing through you. And unless we understand that, we are not going to be a good tree that produces a lot of fruits. Because it's him working, working through us. And sometimes he just tells us, stop. Say, God, but no, no, just, just stop there. We were talking about Elijah and Elisha. And how many miracles I think in Elisha? The, the, the first one. It's hard for me. I thank you, Pastor Mark, that for him was hard as well. So you, so I think it was seven, seven or eight. The other one was 16. But when you think about lifetime, that's not that much, right? Eight miracles in the whole lifetime. And like, God, I, I can do more than Elijah. Why? Yeah, I'm, I'm a full-time. I'm a full-time minister. And sometimes it's just this, this, this fight that you have. And we were having fight in our hearts, in our mind. Why God brought us back to Fiji? Why we are back here? Now the country shut down. We cannot move. And that was interesting because uh, uh, we start to pray and doors start to open for us. And relationships start to open for us. And uh, in, the, in these relationships, we met this couple here. On the back, there is Tuma. On my side, here is Judith. The boy is Micah, and the little girl is Sina there. And this is one of is our best friends in Fiji, the local one that's not part of our ministry. That's our best friends that we we met during the, from last year to here. And the key for relationship for us, the new ones that we have in Fiji, the fresh one for last year, the key is called Sophia. <laughs> because she was the one, and she was, now she is the one that goes to talk to all the kids in the park. <laughs> if we take her to the park, she's going to talk to all the kids. She saw Sina in a, in a, in a stroller, and she went to see Sina. It's a baby. That's why we are so grateful that we have Olivia. Because this little one, she needs a baby at home. Really. She's crazy about babies. And she went to talk. And then we saw this little girl called Sina. Asinate. Sina. And then after Micah came up. And then Tuma was walking further. And I started talking to um, Judith. And then after my, uh, he came, we started talking. They are missionaries as well. He's Fijian. She's from Vanuatu. And um, they are missionaries from the Camps Crusades for Christ. And we became good friends. And, and, and that was a time for us to open a relationship. There was another family that we have a good relationship with them. They are not Christian. They are Hindus. And they are probably, the, I would say, one of the richest family in Fiji and they used to bring their grandson to play and Sophia used to play with him because of that we became good friends of this family and it's just this thing of that the relationship that I have in Fiji that is very solid that we have that it is solid it's because our time last year we hope to go back if we go back the Lord allowed us to go back we have solid relationships there and if you want to be a witness of Christ, you have to have good relationship with people that they know that you act in a different way because of who lives in you. It's just that. 
it is, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm used to that of go and preach quickly and come back, go and preach. But when you develop relationship in a long term, people start to see the fruits in your life and the way that you do. So we got good relationships last year because we were stopped. If we were in a move, we could not do. So it's things that we cannot understand sometimes, but everything we go to God in prayer. And if we listen to him, he is going to direct us. You can go to the next one. Um, that is a visit that Ben and I did to another village. Uh, you can go ahead. That's another family that we met. Uh, this is Jerry here on the left. Back there is Anna. And then you have Litia, Victoria, and Agape. We met this couple last year in Fiji as well. They were missionaries in YWAM for over 10 years in India. And the amazing thing is, Anna is from Brazil. Brazil, it's a big country. Anna is from the capital of my state. Our talk is the same. Our taste for food is the same. And we met in Fiji. And now they are back in Brazil. When you go to Brazil, hopefully you're going to meet them there. It's these connections that happens that only God can make those connections. And good, good, good friend of us. And Jerry, he's, like I say, he's Fijian. He met Anna in India. They married in Brazil and has been maybe like that. And their kids, Agape, the front here, I think she's six or seven years old now. And she talks Portuguese and English like easy, back and forth, back and forth. And I hope Sophia is going to be like that. You can go next. Uh, they have, uh, because our, our city is it's this biggest city, <coughs> second biggest city in Fiji, we have this board in school. And a lot of kids come from the islands to get uh, high school education in the main island. And our, uh, like I say, our city has some board, good boarding schools, and they have one that's only, only for girls. So then uh, it's a Christian boarding school from the Methodist Church, and then they invited Timberly to speak to the, to the girls over there. And you know Kimberly more than I do, and she's this shy girl that she doesn't like to talk much. But uh, she has very, very deep knowledge of the word. And when she, she, she talks about Jesus, it's like, whoa. I, I, I was touched by her message there. And the word that she preached on that day or talked to the girls was what to expect. What are you expect? It's good to have something to expect. And I remember that she told them that Jesus expects us to be with him so then he can show us his glory that was given before the creation of the world. Isn't that amazing to be looking every day for that? That Jesus wants me to be with him? Me? Are you sure, Jesus? It's like myself. And that's his expectation. He died on the cross to make sure that this was available for me. And that's available for us. That was his preaching to these girls on that day. A and, and it's just amazing. I, 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 I'm always telling her, write more, speak more, because when, when she speaks, it's just this grace that flows from her mouth. I love you. Yeah, she, she's great. Okay, so she had this opportunity. It's only girls that she's speaking there that day. And then the next one. Uh, on, on, this, on this thing of asking God to open doors for us, and, and praying and, and get all my fights with myself. What should I do? Um, I, I went, I told him, I'm, I'm going to the market. That's where everyone comes. I'm going to the market to pray and read my Bible there and just spend some time there. And I did that, I think, for three or four times. And as I was sitting there, this lady on the right, her name is Amlesh. She's a widow. And she has these two sons. The left one is uh, Raj, Rajnil. Rajnil. And uh, he is deaf, deaf and mute. And the middle one, so that's the oldest one on the left. And then you have the middle one, that he's a normal boy. But uh, she had been struggling for her 
pretty much her whole life. Or I should say 20 years is end, it's finished for 20 years now since her husband died and he wasn't a very good help for her and she has been struggling and she goes to the to Bagney streets. And then I I was there and she came to me and I said, okay. So I started talking to her, I said, you see, if I give you two dollars, what good I'm doing to you? What can you get for that? Maybe rice? You eat rice today, tomorrow you're hungry again. You need more. You know? And But I have something that if I give to you, it's going to last for life. And there's no money that's going to buy on that one. We can talk more about that one. And then we, I, I open for her and then she started to show me her needs on that first meeting. I say, okay, let, let, me, let me tell you something. I, you know, I have my Bible here. I'm a Christian, okay? And I don't do things without pray on that one. Let me pray about you. Give me your phone and I will pray. And took uh, a month, I think, and then I met her on the inner streets. And because I'm white, it's easy to identify myself. I'm not uh, uh, in the middle of the, 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 the crowd there. So she came and she started to talk to me. And then from that day, uh, uh, we started to help her every month with, uh, uh, with food. And because we had some help, we were able to do that every month. I go to the market, say, okay, you have this amount. Go and get what you need with this amount. Then she did, and I say, I want to visit you. And we started doing a weekly visitation to that family. And I just want to show you some of places of her house there. And one of her, uh, uh, one of her needs, and I went to, to go to her house, and one of her needs was she was living... It's, it's amazing when you go, you go inside a house like that. And, and it was just when rains, it gets water a lot inside. You can pass there. Somebody helped her a little bit and it stopped on the middle. And that is the trouble when you're trying to help somebody. Don't, don't start if you can't go to the end. Because otherwise you are going to be called the fool. That's what Jesus talked about. If you, if you go to a war, make sure that you can win the war. Otherwise, just surrender. Don't kill your soldiers. If you want to help somebody, make sure that you go to the end. Otherwise, you are going to make a mess. And that was what happened with her. And it was, you can go for the next one. There, there was, that's her house. And she wanted to make something big because her house is the, pretty much the only one that has two, two store there. And it takes a lot of money to make that. You can go for the next one, next picture there. It's just, uh, and she has this, uh, um, it's a concrete over here. And that back there isn't a concrete. So that's just a box for water right there. So if you go for the next picture, it's going to have uh, right on that, yeah, that part there. We had to put uh, a concrete there to try to create a safe space for her. But then, they, they, again, it takes money. It takes money to do that. I'm not a builder. I can help, but I'm not a builder. I have to project. I cannot just make something in a way that uh, uh, is going to be good for one year and then plop, collapse in her head, and then this missionary come to Fiji and help to kill a woman. You know? <laughs> those, those is, you, 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 yeah, you, you, ha you, have, you have to think ahead. And then I start to looking, how much do I need to do here? What can you do? Came to her, I cannot help you with all. What can you do and I can help with all the rest? So we were able, you can go ahead. You, we are able to <coughs> help her to cover that back and that front there. You can, you can go ahead a little bit. And again, uh, because that, that was complete, the job there, I think the next picture, let's see, no, go back. Yeah, the, the other side we helped her as well. And uh, we were able at least to, because now she can stay under that thing there without the water. And Cyclone hits Fiji at least twice a year. And hit bad, where it goes, hit bad and flood, it's awful there. So anyway, um, anyway, uh, uh, we are able to do some help there. Isn't finished, but at least it's better now. And we did a little bit more, and I'm almost giving to you. Okay, uh, we this next picture here. It's when I went to the other island to teach. I was able to teach on this uh, course uh, that was, I think, for seven weeks, and I was given the opportunity to speak about Christian relationships. And 
for me it was a good challenge because when you are preaching, you are preaching for 30 minutes. When you are teaching, you have to prepare your material, you have to speak during two hours and all the topics. And that was my first time doing that in English and it was a great opportunity for me, a uh, good challenge. And you are going to grow when you get challenged to do something bigger than you have done so far. <laughs> so next picture there, and that's the, our, our class. Mm -hmm. And there was a good numbers of youth over there. And then the next picture, I believe it's my last one. This was a picnic. Where you go for a picnic in Fiji? In a beach, of course. <laughs> you don't go for the mountain. You're in a beach, so you go for the beach. And what do you eat? Fish. <laughs> and what they had prepared for me when I got there? The head. And I say, I don't like the head. It doesn't have meat on it. Give me the tail. I'm not the chief. <laughs> But anyway, what was interesting here was most of the boys know how to swim. So then they just bring uh, cassava from, from town, get here. The boys go and get the fish and come and boil it and that's it. The food is right there and you have plenty. So it's just this good experience that uh, we, we really had in Fiji. So I'm going to head now to give the, the, the mic to Kimberly. You can come and I can pick it up here. Because she's going to be talking about another door that opened for us that I think the two, two uh, ministers that used our time most last year was our weekly time visitation with Amlesh. And every, every week we would go there and have dinner with her. Sometimes we take the food, sometimes she cooks for us. It was a spice in the beginning, but then after she started cooking for her, family and for us, as without spicy. And when I'm saying without spice, it's not like 100% without spice, you know? <laughs> but she'd put one spice for us, one, um, one chili for us, and like 10 or 15 chilies for the family there. But anyway, and then um, in, the, in the end, we show them the, the, the Jesus movie. It's a great project. You have that in so many languages. And then we were able to, to they, they accept Jesus in the end, and, and that was what I was telling there in the beginning. What I have for you, it's much better than money and last for eternity. So, and then the other opportunity of ministry, Kimberly is going to talk to you a little bit about that one. Hi, good morning everyone. No, no, we're going to show a video first, I think. So the other ministry that we got involved with was Homes of Hope, and I think those of you who've re read the newsletter read about that also. But we were looking, I, I just got the idea to look online and see what other ministries there were, because our ministry, what we did, couldn't really happen during COVID. So I decided to look and see if there were other places that took volunteers that were still, were still able to work. And the one that caught my eye was Homes of Hope, and I think the reason it caught my eye was because they recommended a book we had just finished reading, and we, we had read the book and loved it, and but thought, like, how would this look in real life? It, it, it's hard to see how we could go from where we are to doing everything that this book recommended. And this, this organization said, we would like all our volunteers to read this book first. And so we thought, hmm, they must be trying to live out the principles in this book. Let's see if we can visit them. And so that ministry was Homes of Hope. And what they do is they try to rescue, restore, and reintegrate girls that have been trafficked or abused. Um, most of their girls are 15 to 17. They have a target age of 26 and below, and they say their youngest victim was three months. And so I'll talk a little bit more about them afterwards, but I'll let you watch their video that they've already made about what they do first. Known for a lush landscape and tropical resorts, Fiji is a destination for vacation by many. But for those who live here, there is another side of the postcard. As it is, as I speak, cases of sexual abuse and sexual exploitation, yes, is on the rise in Fiji, as I speak. Because it happens everywhere. Uh, they are our future. If we exploit, if we abuse them now, we will, uh, we will have to expect that that is what they are going to do when they become mothers and fathers in future. According to statistics, 
The South Pacific is one of the most dangerous places in the world for young girls. Sexual violence is increasing due to Western influences, an increase in substance abuse and poverty, and a lack of positive community support. So uh, my husband and I and our six kids came to Fiji in 1997 thinking that we were going to start an orphanage and God had other plans. He used a woman and her daughter to direct us and this daughter's name was Pinky and when we first arrived Pinky was about nine or ten years old and she was begging on the streets with her mom and after a year and a half um, we noticed that the daughter was now developing into adolescence and uh, the mother was selling the daughter to taxi drivers for money. And so we realized at that moment that had we been able to help the mother, that perhaps the child wouldn't have been trafficked. Our vision is of a future where women and children are free from the stigmas and the cycles of forced sex. We work towards this goal through a number of programs, including long-term residential care and support, community-based outreach, and building a coalition to replicate our efforts. Our residential program offers a three-prong approach to help surviving victims, rescuing them out of their current situation, restoring them to wholeness, and reintegrating them back into society. During their stay, women are supported to navigate the responsibilities of pregnancy, motherhood, parenting, social enterprise, and other aspects of life. Counseling and medical care is provided to foster healing from trauma, and women receive education and small business skill training. We believe this extended care is essential, as residents need time to heal and be empowered to become successful, independent caretakers for their family and valued members of their community. Additionally, the social enterprise programs serve dual purposes hands-on real-life business experience for our mothers, and a sustainable income to help support and fund the running of Homes of Hope. Secondly, Homes of Hope runs community-based outreach programs, advocating on behalf of women and setting up safety nets in at-risk communities to stop the destructive cycle. As a key component to this process, our team works to build relationships with government officials, village leaders, and churches. The way forward is to continue to, to provide awareness programs, continue to work with the victims. Uh, we need to be, as a ministry, we need to be working together in collaboration with those who have experience and expertise on uh, the ground in addressing such issues. And so Homes of Hope has been identified as one of the leading agencies that is working specifically with uh, victims of CSEC. Beyond Fijian borders, Homes of Hope is working in other nations in the South Pacific to share knowledge, develop partnerships, and pioneer projects. Sex trafficking in Fiji is similar to other nearby Pacific nations, and Homes of Hope strives to be a resource to those nations. Mark and I and our staff, our local staff, are so excited to see what God will continue to do, and we will push on to creating safety nets in communities and continue on helping to rescue, restore, and reintegrate women, the Naka. All right, so we emailed them, and it turned out that they also received a lot of teams volunteering to come help, help them from Australia and New Zealand. And so they also, when Fiji shut down, had lost a lot of their manpower to do things. And so when we asked if we could volunteer, they said, hmm, it sounds interesting. Why don't you send us what you can do, and we'll see if there's anything that's a fit. And after we emailed back and forth a couple times, they sent us a list of, okay, here, this is everything we need done. Choose what you want to do. <laughs> but they, they talked about the streams, the different streams that they put the girls into to train them for work. They have a farm that where they have uh, lambs chickens, tilapia pond. Um, they grow a lot of their own food. They have a big garden. They have a baking stream where they train the girls to do baking to sell. Um, they teach, if, if the girls choose sewing, they have a sewing class and room where they can train them to do tailoring. And, and there's a hospitality stream where they teach them to train them to work in the hotels, which wasn't as 
as full right now because they don't have, but they do have a guest house on their farm where people can come and pay to stay and then the girls have practice to fix the rooms and clean up the rooms afterwards and so serving service. And so they're, uh, they choose a stream and then they're trained during the time that they're there. It's usually around two years that they're there, 18 months to two years. And so they, they're trained in that as well as in Bible study and financial responsibility. They do actually pay the girls for the work they do, but they also require them to pay rent. So it's kind of a, and then they put the rent that they get into an account for the girls. So it's kind of a <laughs> circular thing, but they're training a lot of principles of finances for the girls while they're there. And so there were just a lot of interesting things that we got to learn. Marcus helped a lot on the farm with a lot of the, there's one man that's over the farm and he had a list about, what was it, three pages long in a notebook, <laughs> small writing. <laughs> and so Marcus got to help him with some of the maintenance and the construction that needed to be done. And they let me help with writing some of the classes on pregnancy and childbirth that they had, that they were tra training the girls in. So, and then I got to teach some of them too on the, on the trips that we made to Suva. And we got to do some Bible studies with the girls. They have family nights. And they try to really give the girls a family while they're there so that they see what a Christian family, functioning family looks like. And then we also liked that they do go into the villages and work with the girls' families as well so that when the girls get out and go back into their villages, the village already has a safety net and the family has a safety net to, to help the girl reintegrate. And then they, are, they have also chosen, I think it's 30-something villages that are high, high risk for, for girls and they're working with those villages, with the leadership in those villages and they send their team, their community development team in and do training with the leaders to try to prevent. So it was a really interesting experience and a blessing to get to be part of that. And um, Lynn Rush, the one, the couple that started, they had us over to their house the last time we were there for dinner. And she said, I'm really worried about you two going back to America. It's gonna be such a social, I mean, such a culture shock for you. And I said, you know, I don't think you have to worry because our church is different and our family is different and so we're going to have our own little <laughs> safety net and, and it's, it's going to be okay. And she said, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> all right. So we just thank you all for, you all were a part of everything we did and we thank you so much for the prayers and the support and the financial support and everything. It meant so much, means so much to us and we really thank you.